In this video, I will show you how signal and image, image processing problems can lead to large-scale convex optimization problems. So, um, since we have dealt with discretization in, in the shortest path problem, I will not go into details here and I will already assume that our signals and our images are discrete, which means that you have a kind of a discrete time signal where you have uh, one point, next point, and so on, and don't have a continuous time signal. And as an image, you have um, a pi uh, an image with pixels. Okay, so usually the, the optimization variable um, is an image and you already see uh, each pixel corresponds to one variable, so th that might be a quite large number. Okay, so what are typical challenges in, the, in imaging? So, uh, let's uh, see. So images are 2D or 3D. Um, again, in our case, um, you, can, you can see this as matrices of pixels. And 2D images can correspond to usual photographs, for example, they can measure um, other quantities um, like the distribution of certain um, certain materials in in your body or in in stones, whatever you like. And 3D images can correspond to either 3D visualizations of the same thing, or they can correspond to, for example, videos where the third dimension is time. And um, very often you have um, um, the uh, images which are corrupted by uh, linear transformation. Examples are um, for, uh, uh, blurring. So if you're taking an image and your camera is for whatever reason out of focus, then you get the, the effect that um, neighboring pixels are melting in, into each other and uh, the, the features of the image are not clearly visible anymore. Uh, what you can also have is the uh, Radon transform or ray transform. This is uh, the case for computerized tomography. So instead of uh, measuring the the uh, attenuation of of your of your of an X-ray at a certain point of of your of of the body, if you take a, a medical imaging, uh, you're 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 taking you're you're uh, you're ha you're having a source, an X-ray source, and you have a detector, and you're basically measuring how much uh, how, how much attenuation you have along a certain ray through the body and you only you can only measure those ray integrals and this is a linear transformation and if you want to uh, if you want to visualize the actual um, attenuation for each point then you have to go back from these line integrals to um, to the the actual distribution okay and the ray transform which takes the distribution and gives the, uh, the line integrals as a linear transformation. Or you can have a Fourier transform. This is the case for MRI. Um, usually the Fourier transform in MRI you have a few sampling points uh, or at least fewer sampling points than the desired resolution for your, for your image. And you want to um, uh, basically go back, uh, go back, and and reconstruct your your image from the f or the image in, in this case being um, the distribution of some um, hydrogen um, 
um, in, in your body and you want to go back from the Fourier transformed image to the, to the actual uh, image in, in, in the body. Okay, and another, another case would be if you actually don't have a, a linear transformation, you just take the identity and then you might uh, think this as a denoising problem where you have an image and you just add some noise because, for example, the exposure time was too short or something like that. And then you want to get rid of the noise and then the transform you choose is the identity. And uh, denoising can, on, can also be useful for signal processing um, when, you, when, you, when you have a, 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 ti uh, a time dependent signal and you have a lot of noise and you want to get rid of this noise to get the actual signal out of this. Okay, so the linear transform, I, I, will, I will denote it by T. So um, Tx gives you an image Y plus some noise. And the noise is usually the problem because at least for the three transforms here, the noise is actually amplified if you want to go back from the transformed image to the, to the original image. And this is a problem. So the, 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 the approach of choice would usually be to take a least squares problem And the least squares problem would be to minimize um, um, an expression here. You want to minimize Tx minus y over x. And x is the image, is usually some, some kind of, of real, uh, um, of, uh, for example, you can take n times n. Um, or if you have a three-dimensional uh, image, you can also add a third dimension, um, whatever you, you want. And um, you have the squared here. Uh, so you minimize this. The problem is, as I said, if you, uh, if you exactly solve this problem, then you run into issues that you get so-called overfitting, that uh, you exactly reconstruct uh, which original image would correspond to the noisy um, image here. And this is not what you want usually. So in order to, to overcome this, so the, the original least squares problem, least squares problem leads to overfitted solutions. And this is the reason why you want to have so-called regularization. And what you do is you add something, um, some kind of prior information here. So this is, this would be what you expect from x. And usually this is some kind of um, some kind of functional which uh, penalizes high frequency noise. Um, one typical choice would be the uh, some kind of total variation which measures the, the variation between neighboring pixels and sums, sums them all up. And very often you have a uh, you have a functional here which which wants to promote sparsity um, uh, in some in some way. For example, you want to ensure that a lot of these differences between neighboring pixels are actually zero, so they are all have the same um, color or same attenuation or same um, whatever you like, uh, same grayscale uh, intensity. And then uh, you usually. Um, if you if you do want to promote sparsity, then you take some L, uh, some call, uh, L1 functional. So uh, you don't take a smooth uh, no, uh, L, uh, norm squared L2 norm squared functional, but instead you take 
an L1 norm, so you take the sum of some absolute values, and this one is give, often has non-smooth, so non-differentiable um, uh, components. Okay, and um, another another very trivial thing to add is uh, sometimes you have the condition that your the the quantity you're measuring is always greater or equal than zero. Then you can add this as a constraint, and this will also be a convex constraint. So this will not ruin your pro, uh, your your problem, it will just insert additional ex uh, information and you can also count this as what you expect from x. Okay, and like this you get um, you get optimization problems with n times m times k variables and if you have a higher resolution image or a video or a three-dimensional um, image then this might be a, um, a large quantity so that you um, th that you cannot just take any like derivative of arbitrary order and and solve this problem. So um, in this fashion, um, this is one example for large-scale convex optimization problems.